how your uh, novel served as a mirror for all of us. We, we, there were there were reflections, and I had the privilege of reading them all, and it was it was intense. Uh, you know, we had some Monday nights, we had some heavy duty things, <laughs> and and last Saturday uh, or Saturday before we had quite a discussion. But time is moving on, and they eventually did get the book. So we began in March, and in April, uh, they get the book after they've gone through the first half, largely through handouts. And then I asked them, now please read straight through to page 106, which is the beginning of Vietnam. And so they did that as well. And here's what one of the seminar members wrote in, on about page 102. And if you just, if you would, just read this one paragraph, it's funny. Yeah. It's funny to think about the way the whole world is disappearing like that, that every moment we get closer until, and inevitably, there comes that one instant, that impetus, whatever it will be, by which we are one day blown, finally, from our own furthest extremity, like leaves from a thin branch at the end of a tree. And here's, uh, after they had read right through to that page uh, s straight, here's what they wrote about the... F um, the first 106 pages of The Sentimentalist. The Sentimentalist is vitally interested in culling the experience of time and memory for insights about how we digest life, question its dramatic spills and splays, look inward as well as outward over and over again shifting subjective positioning. The narrator's reflections on the past, and in the first hundred pages which I've read a great deal on the past of Henry, the narrator's reflections are studded with allusions to the strangeness of understanding how things work as well as to the myriad baggage we carry forward day by day, the final image of leaves blown from a thin branch in the cited text has something ghostly about it, suggesting the way consciousness is ephemeral as well as fragile, changing, flickering. Not only consciousness, of course, also the world entire with its bits and pieces and phantom wholeness, its way of appearing and disappearing and falling apart and settling in unforeseeable gusts. The first half of the book is rather precisely dreamlike in the sense that memory is the articulate player precisely hinging one realization to the next, the hinging done more in a spatial rather than a linear manner, the concrete repeatedly floating just out of reach of being grasped, the images murmuring past and present both. I adore the way the text in the book rewards rereads even as I work to take in its significance. I cannot go back uh, to your first uh, picture in uh, your uh, moment of uh, lighting or of the crystal, you know, when mm -hmm. you are in the bar on the ocean. Uh -huh. And uh, it's true, uh, I am, uh, I didn't uh, read uh, your book, but uh, I feel the same. All the memories <laughs> from my life is been waiting. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, it's amazing. <laughs> yeah, it's very philosophical, uh, your, uh, your novel. And also, uh, you know, it's like a poem in uh, prose. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, very, very deep and uh, 
is like an ocean, or like mm. uh, the time you are talking about the time um, and his effect uh, in everybody. You know, like a river. You know, he is coming and he is changing us, and we are uh, just uh, I don't know. Mm. It's very hard to be. We are like uh, I don't know. Well, like, wait till you read it because yeah. you're quite right. The rule of water. And the river. Yeah, it's like it's uh, the effect of the time, you know, uh, <laughs> with our life and our entity and our historical uh, coming, you know. Well, here's another person who's read now up to page 106 and their take on that first half. Interesting read with some super imagery, especially the idea of taking a boat ride over the house you used to live in, or to protect your house with a dam. It seems to border on the magical realism. It just happens to be real. There was an exhibit at the Canadian Centre for Architecture that included newspaper articles and letters regarding the flooding of the part of the St. Lawrence River. The personal story from the exhibit didn't hit me so strongly, and I don't remember <coughs> too much about it. What was stronger at that exhibit came from the videos of the migration of Newfoundlanders from isolated coastal communities to towns, some of which floated and pulled with tugboats their homes across the sea. Looking on Google Earth, you can almost convince yourself that you can see the submerged highway that ran along the northern bank of the St. Lawrence. And I did mind to fan Mine, uh, managed to find some photos also. The geography of the book is a little confusing at times. Being turned around at the Canadian border when Helen and the narrator were children, I didn't really understand what they were trying to do geographically. That irritated me a little. Maybe this book is too North American. I couldn't find Casablanca on the map either. <laughs> <laughs> The timing of the story keeps changing, and sometimes I wondered, how old is the narrator? She could be eight or thirty. She could be dead. <laughs> they might not be. People might live there, and they might not. It's as if the narrator's father's thoughts that, quote, people should stay eight years old forever became true. <laughs> Nostalgia, as something to describe, must be difficult. The blueprints, the boat, resonated in his lungs. The confusing nature of nostalgia, the sense of being it gives you. Putting things into, quote, a more private and less complicated system, end of quote, page 91. The sense of place but not necessary, necessarily place of understanding. Hybrid identities, grandmother ghosts, submerged identities, sailing above memories, fishing over past memories, transitioning through memories, persona nostalgia, group nostalgia, centers, of ownership and self. The description on page 93 and 94 of being blown off course towards different estuaries as a metaphor for finding one's way through struck me as a profound observation. A few times, whilst reading, I thought of the alchemist's theme that what you are looking for is at home. Hmm. That's interesting. I think of then, uh, um, yeah, the idea of the, it, yeah, so it wasn't in, in that first half, obviously, that, um, so it says, father character says, well, isn't it strange that what you're looking for is four hours away or something along, mm -hmm. oh, I, th I guess Henry says that, um, because it took him that long, and, uh, and, uh, and, then the father character displaces that once one time again because Henry says that to suggest that he's found it. I mean, he was looking for Henry, he found it, they were at the lake, 
And then the father character sort of displaces the light of that again and says, well, if it's that close, what are we waiting for? Let's go. They're always, you know, the idea of, uh, of that again, that displacement, or like uh, always looking for something that's potentially ungraspable, or that is always ungraspable. But that's interesting. I like, I like the idea of the, um, what age is she anyway? <laughs> yeah, 8, 30, dead. Um, I actually, I had this sort of excruciating um, interview with a, a newspaper reporter that had, like, he had, I think, just, you know, read the book in about 15 minutes. And um, he thought that, uh, uh, he's like, so, did she get hit by the car? A car? And uh, um, so in that scene, you know, where like she it is, you know, this dramatic uh, scene where she's like has this sort of disembodied experience, and she ends up in Casablanca. Um, so she's standing on the on the intersection, and she's sort of, and then she's floating out. So I could see in a very quick read why, you know, and then he didn't somehow, I don't know, maybe he didn't get to get further than that or something. But he's like, so. She can't be in my car. And <laughs> I was like, I don't know. I don't know what we're going to have to talk about in this interview. <laughs> but it is interesting. I mean, because I could see that that, 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 that that reading, that is she dead? I mean, I mean it does, like, I, I have I, like this idea of extricating herself from the um, from narrative details. I mean, that would be the ultimate, really. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, we've talked, childhood came up again and again in, in what the seminar members wrote. And now the question of the age of the narrator mm -hmm. ar arises. In, in certain circles, they speak of the inner child. Did you see yourself writing this from the inner child? Hmm. Um, that's interesting. I, I, um, I think that, I mean, so much of that, when we, you're talking about, okay, well, she's going, going back to explore um, where she comes from, and and when I said just a, a few moments ago, I was like, okay, so maybe not even so much in terms of the specificities of her story, but in terms of what shapes her, what that what shaped her consciousness. That I think that that might be a, a good way of, of expressing that, to, um, of just to to find um, yeah, to find to find access really at maybe to to that process of, of shaping. Who she she had or wanted to become, and uh, and in terms of my own process writing it, that I, I I know that sometimes in poetry, but also with the prose as well, that um, I I find often that I I do try and just sort of em empty my I, I I suppose it's hard to find the right words to to articulate it doesn't um, shape it somehow and I don't want it to, in direction I don't want to go. But I suppose empty is a, is a way to, to talk about that, of, of, of just sort of, well, maybe in the sense of like looking at the 500 page and being like, okay, what is this story really about? I'm sort of going to a space in my mind of like, okay, well, what, what, what do you really want to be thinking about? Or what do you really want to have be expressed here? And I think that maybe in a way, uh, articulating that as like an inner child of just like sort of like an experiential um, openness to the world, which is I think something that you know children have yeah. in a much more sort of open way than than, than we we than, than we as adults have that we we have those moments maybe these that's also the crystal clear moment idea of, of just a, a sort of experiential openness um, that is is much more common. Mm -hmm. To, to children or to memories maybe of our own childhood than it is to adulthood. Makes sense. Well, there is one uh, figure 